All right, let's go ahead and clean up our model a bit before we move forward. You see I have a bunch of n-gons here, and we need to fix those. Um, if we don't fix the n-gons, they can create some problems. You see I also did not connect those two verts properly, so I'm going to go to my target weld tool in the modeling toolkit, click on one vertex, and drag it to the other to fix it. Next, I'll go to my multi-cut tool, and I'm going to add edge loop there and there, and here, and here, and here. Remember, I can hold control to add edge loops with the multi-cut tool. Then I will click on one vertex and click on the other to connect it. And I actually don't want this edge loop. Go here to here. To complete the cut, remember you can just right click or hit enter on the keyboard. So notice that I'm creating quads, four-sided polygons instead of uh, these n-gons. Let's make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Looking pretty good. Let's go to cleanup and select faces with more than four sides and hit apply. And if it does not select anything, then that means there are no end gons. If I look at my reference, let's model this detail here. So I can see that the width, I want to use these, these uh, two edge loops here, this one and this one, they're too far apart currently. Um, they, it would make that indentation too wide. So what I wanna do is deselect all of the edges that would impact the cord insert. And once I've deselected all of those, make sure I get all of them, then I'll be able to use the scale tool and scale these edges inward to match the width of that indentation. So, you know, just be patient, rotate around, make sure that you've deselected all of these little edges. Get rid of these as well. And now that I only have those, I can hit R to go to my scale tool. And I want to scale in the X axis. And I'll use my reference to scale this in to match those indentations. Next, I'm going to see how far down that indentation goes. You can see that my front, uh, my front view and my top view, they don't line up for this indentation, so I'm just gonna use the top view because I know that the indentation is centered along the cord insert. I'm gonna go ahead and select these four faces. And those four faces, I'm actually gonna do this one at a time but these are the faces that I will be manipulating to create those indentations. So let's select those four and delete them. I'm gonna select these edges and bridge. I'll add one division to that bridge, like so. And I'm going to select these two edges Go to my move tool and vertex snap the edges so that they line up like that. And then I'll do the same thing. So again, I'll delete these, bridge across, add one division, select the middle edge, and then hit W to go to my move tool. And then to vertex snap, remember you select the direction first and then hold V and middle mouse click and drag over the vertex you want to snap to, like that. So I have to go one direction, then the other. Then I'll select those edges and bridge. I'll select these edges and bridge, and I'm just using the G key to reuse the last tool that I used, which was bridge. <coughs> Good. Oops. 
So now that I have this done, I'm gonna go ahead and split up the model into the parts that we talked about at the beginning because we're gonna start adding more details and we don't wanna get a bunch of edges wrapping around that we don't need. So I'll zoom in, go to face mode, and I'm going to select, uh, or actually I'm gonna to go to edge mode. I'm gonna select that edge. And then I'll go to edit mesh and detach. Then I'll go to object mode and mesh separate. And if you've done that correctly, now you should have, you know, detached that the, all those faces. I'm gonna center the pivot. And again, I hit control one to isolate. <clears throat> I'm gonna create a new plane, change the subdivision levels down to one, rotate it 90 degrees. I'll turn on wire mode on, wireframe on shaded on, and then I'll use vertex snapping and snap these edges so that they line up to the same size of my original piece. And I'm doing this so I can have a clean piece um, for for the uh, center of the controller without having to delete edges and stuff. Then I'll go ahead and use the move tool in object mode and vertex snap this to where the original piece is. And then I'll select the original piece and delete it. I'll hit control one to get out of isolate mode. And then I'm going to scale this up so that it is larger than the original piece, but that it does not you know, cut through the model. So I hit four on my keyboard so I can go to wireframe mode. And once I've scaled it up, I'll turn wireframe on shaded off and I'll hit five. Now let's go over here, go to our multi-cut tool and middle mouse click in there. We're gonna do the same thing. Double click on that edge, then go to me uh, edit mesh, detach. Let's go back to object mode, then mesh separate. And now you can see we have two pieces, the back half and the front half. I'm going to select that piece, center the pivot, and I'm gonna start deleting edges that I don't need that aren't affecting the um, silhouette or the major forms. So all of these, I'm just double clicking on these edges. I'm gonna hit control and delete. And remember to always hit hold control before deleting an edge if you want to delete the vertices that are attached to that edge. If you don't do that, you'll end up with a bunch of end gons. So I'm just looking around. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to go to vertex mode, select these vertices, hit my scale tool by hitting R. And what I want to do is just kind of line this up because the controller tapers a little bit. So I'm gonna scale this in the X and I'm, use, I'm looking at the top viewport, the top orthographic view. I wanna line it up a little bit like that. And then let's do the same thing for the front. So I'll go to vertex mode. And I wanna select just the front vertices. I wanna make sure I don't get any of the vertices that are part of the cord insert. And then I'll scale this in a little bit as well. Uh, I'm not going to mess with those. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to do all the screw holes. So I'm going to take the image plane layer off of reference and select this image plane, move it down and then I'm gonna to go to view, image plane, import image, and I'm going to find the back image. There it is, and hit open. And then I'll move this up, and I'm gonna just going to adjust this by using the move and, let's see, scale tool, uh, just to line things up. That way we'll be ready to do those screw holes. This is looking pretty good. So I'll go um, to the attribute editor and I will select the image plane, 
change it to looking through camera and then change the alpha gain to 0.5 again. 